So we're going to continue this lesson. We're going to be simplifying uh, expressions with rational exponents. So I'm going to scoot all the way down and we're going to look at D, what to do here. So as I stated earlier, remember there is no exponent out here or here, so there's nothing to essentially distribute to them. So all I have to do is find each component and bring them together. So the 3 times the 4 is the 12. Now how do I handle the x's? Well, I'm going to add the exponents. Right, so I will have an x, but what has to happen? I have to add the one half, and I have to add the two thirds. So I'm just going to do that down on the side somewhere. So just down here, I'm going to take the one half, and I'm going to add the two thirds. Just as a side note, the downside of this is it's not in the right form. I need to have common denominators. So to get common denominators, I have to multiply this one by three to get a six down below, and this one by two to get a six down below. Remember, whatever I do to the numerator, I have to do to the denominator. And, <laughs> all right, so uh, finishing up here, I get three over six plus uh, four over six, so that gives me seven over six. So it's that seven sixth that's gonna go up there. Now remember when you write your uh, exponent as a fraction, remember you can write them as a vertical or you can write them horizontal. Horizontal gives you the idea here, it gives it a little bit easier to get it and fit it in. So you're welcome to do it this way, but please, 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 please do not be doing this like that. The problem with that is yes, Oh, yes, the 7 looks like an exponent, but the way this is all designed, the whole fraction looks like it's multiplying, not as an exponent. So be very, very, very clear. Sometimes you have to write your bases bigger than you're used to. Sometimes you have to write your exponents smaller than you're used to. Our, the key thing is communication. Let's communicate with each other cleanly and well, so then there's no misunderstandings. So let's remember the rules on a problem like this. If I have x to the m over x to the n, what you do is subtract the exponents. So in this case, for the x, I have to subtract 1 half minus 1 third. Then over here, I have to do 2 thirds minus 1 half. Okay? So effectively, I'm subtracting them. So I'm just going to take a moment on the side to do that and consider that. So I have 1 half minus 1 third for the blue there, and over here 2 thirds minus 1 half. Convert everything accordingly, and then take that result and bring it back up to the base. The bases are x's and y's, but our exponents are going to be whatever you get there. Take a All right, let's practice some simplification. So we're going to turn this puppy over and attack, kill, destroy. Uh, first one straightforward. When we raise the five, uh, notice here I'm multiplying because I have what's called a power of a power. So this five essentially goes in and multiplies. So as you can see, they're just going to cancel out. So we end up with 32 to the one power or simply 32. As we look at this one, notice again, I have a square here, so I can square both of those if I'd like, or I can take the cube root of both of those, or if I could, maybe I could have simplified those. But here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take this cube root, and I'm just gonna send that in right now. I'm just gonna leave the two out for now. All right, so in doing that, I get the 27 there, and the cube root is there. And then in the denominator, I have the cube root of eight, and I'm going to keep a uh, parentheses around and keep the square out. This is just one way of doing things. If you have an easier way or a different method, um, ultimately you have multiple ways to do this. So now we just think about it. What is the cube root of 27? That one's a three. What's the cube root of eight? A two. And all of that is still being squared. Now, we have much smaller numbers. Again, completely mental. I didn't even need my calculator for this. So my answer is actually nine over four. And I'm done. The rate of inflation I, so there's my inflation, that raises the cost of an item from the present P, value P, 
to the future value f over t years is found using this formula. I equals f over p all to the 1, t, 1 over t power minus 1. We're going to round our answer to the nearest tenth of a percent uh, for each one here. All right, so what is the rate of inflation on part A for which a television costing $1,000 today, um, so what would the rate of inflation have to be in order in three years for that same thing to cost $1,500? So I'm going to start with my super secret formula. I equals capital F over P. I'm going to put the 1 over T there and subtract the 1. Again, don't be afraid of and don't need to even ask where this comes from now. And even if you are interested, that doesn't mean you should not even attempt it. So notice it asks me, what is the rate of inflation? So that's what I'm actually finding. So all I'm going to do is substitute and simplify. So let's identify um, the future. What will it become is going to be F. So I see my 1500 is going to go there. And I see that my present day, so that's what the $1,000 today means, goes there for P. 1 over my unknown. Oh, wait, that says T, 3 years, so that's going to be 1 third. Oh, that's starting to look more familiar. Forgot a 0 there. And then subtract 1. We'll see in a second why it's subtract 1. Okay, now all we have to do here is plug stuff into our calculator. It's not overly crazy. Before I even do it, I'm going to go ahead and start reducing a little bit anyways. I'm going to kill those right there. Just to say 15 divided by 10. And this means cube root. So let's do that in our calculators. So I is approximately 1.447 minus 1. And I forgot a 1 in there. Like that. Okay. Good, and so our final result here is going to be I is approximately 14.4. Oops, excuse me, let me change that to 5 because it rounded the nearest tenth percent. Remember that when I do percents, I have to move my decimal over 2. So I get rid of that 1 and I get 0.14, but I'm going to move it over like so. 14% interest. Now, by the way, that's a huge amount. The current interest rates, as far as I know, I think are one point something percent. All right, so 14% is a huge amount. Um, all right, not, it's not bad if, if that's what your interest rate is for a, a bank account, which that's never going to be the case. That's like investment stuff. Or if the uh, value of your house goes up 14% every year, that would be really, really good. Okay, the next part is what kind of inflation will make twice as much what will make it twice as much? So that's what doubling here is. So instead of F, we're just going to put 2P. So I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to start with I equals F over P to the 1 over T. And I'm going to subtract 1 again. Now I start subtracting again. What is the rate of inflation? That's my unknown. So I'm going to keep that I. My future is going to be 2P right there. So 2P over the current price to the 1 over t. So in other words, what's the rate we have to have in order for something to double in value? This applies to your own. Like if you throw $1,000 into a bank account and didn't touch it, how many years would it take for you to have $2,000? Or what was the interest rate you would want to do that in 10 years? Finish this puppy up here. Uh, the P's drop out here. Yay, P's drop out. So now I just left with 2 to the 1 tenth. So 2 to the 1 tenth minus 1. Now let's punch that into our handy dandy calculators. Please find the, find the tenth root of, ten, of 2. Punch that all into a calculator. Convert it to a uh, percent, approximately 7.2%. Again, some banks might even offer that as a savings account, OK? Um, Mutual funds, these kinds of things are really low. Um, if it's a not risky thing, uh, they're going to be low. Things that are riskier are going to be much higher. Uh, 